We are not supposed to preach a different gospel, another gospel. But question is, what is a different gospel? Welcome back to Mark Christian. Sometimes you'll see people being accused of teaching a different gospel, another gospel, a false gospel. And so that begs a question by some, which is what exactly that is meant by a different gospel or another gospel. Well, before we get into what a different gospel is, we need to also, I guess before that, is figure out what is the gospel. Now, Paul says in Romans 1 16, he says that for I am not ashamed of the gospel. And this word here is the word euangelion. It is, <clears throat> it says, for it is the power of God unto salvation or for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also for or to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous or the just shall live by faith. Now, it does give us a little bit of a picture as to what that is, but there might be some need for some more explaining. All the gospel is, or the word Yuangalian means, is the good news or to, or to preach good news, what have you. Now, let me make this clear, make this crystal clear. The gospel should not be, and we're going to see this, should not be understood as needing to do something in order to be saved. The gospel is by faith. Let's look at what it just said. He says in verse 17, for it is the righteousness of God who is, for the righteousness of God, I'm sorry, is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous or the just shall live by faith. And so faith is the key cog that that, that brings about uh, this good news. Without it, there is no good news for you. Now, I want to jump back a little bit into what Jesus is bringing up. And so there's a key, or there's a hint of something that we need to kind of flesh out. You see it here in Romans 1, 6. Let's put it back on the screen. He says that uh, the power, it's, it is the power of God for salvation, that's the gospel, it is the power of God for or unto salvation, uh, and the word is ice, which is in two or two or four, for salvation, look what it says, to everyone who believes, look what it says, and this is important, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, the reason why it says for the to the Jew first is because the good news is referencing something that has to pertain to the Jews and then ends up being extended to the Greek or to the Gentile. Well, where do we see that at? In John 3, 16, Jesus brings this up. Remember, he's speaking to Nicodemus. Just kind of give a little bit of background. He's speaking to Nicodemus about being born again. This Ganethian oath of being born from above. And this is God or the Holy Spirit um, putting his spirit, God putting his spirit in someone's heart. Now, the reason for that uh, is explained in John 3, 16. This is all one continuous thought that he's having with Nicodemus. Sometimes we forget that he, in verse 16, is speaking to Nicodemus. But look what he says. He says, for God loved the world, so loved the world. Now, the way you take this is, who to scar agapason, which is, this is how God shows his love for the world. Okay? I understand that there, the translation, um, the way I just explained it, is written differently. But that's literally what it says. Who toast is, this is how, or in this way. So, for, who toast in this way, this is how. Uh, Agapes and he loved God, the world. This is how he loved the world, so that <clears throat> that he gave his only son. So God gave his only son. Why did God give his only son? Not because he loved the world. He's showing his love for the world, uh, and so he gave his son for this reason. You'll see this this thing that's called a henna clause. <clears throat> he gave his love. I mean, his son, and Dokin, he gave. Henna, which means in order that, this is the reason why he gave his son, in order that all the believing, hapistu one, pas hapistu one, all the believing in him would not perish, but eke they have, will have life into the ages or eternal life. So this is the gospel. The good news is not that salvation has come. Remember, under the old covenant, they could be saved by having faith in what was done on the day of the day of atonement. And in having faith in what God was doing and that their sins were atoned for by faith, their sins were atoned for for one year. However, the possibility of not having your sins atoned for later in another year, that, that was there. So this was a temporal salvation, if you will, 
that needed to be done year after year after year, which the, the book of Hebrews bears us out. And so because it had to be done year after year after year, that was one problem. Another problem is it doesn't do anything to the heart. It does not do anything uh, to the heart. And so there was no Holy Spirit to be deposited in them at that time. And so the point of the gospel, the gospel is not that salvation has come, no, or that salvation has come to the nation, I mean, to, to Israel. Salvation has come to Israel and to the world, the Gentiles, but not that it just came, but as Jesus says, that it would come permanently. In other words, that you would live eternally. There would be no possibility of perishing. That is the gospel. Now, even if a person believes that I do not agree with this issue of eternal security, this one saved, always saved, that's fine. I think I think you missed the point of him coming. This is this is literally why he said he came. And there's other passages that back this up. But without having that fight now, we are told, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that the gospel is for the Jew first and to the Gentile. What does he mean? Well, it was given, offered to the Jews first. We see that the very first people to, to, to confess Christ or trust Christ for salvation were Jews. Then Samaritans, the, the Jewish cousins, half cousins, the Samaritans. And then we see the Gentiles receiving salvation. So from to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. But now, Paul makes a statement about this other gospel. Let's bring it up on two different occasions. He brings up one, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. He says, for if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaim, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. Now, he's making a, a kind of a mocking them and so forth, whatever. But um, he has a problem with people who are accepting. And of course, that was a problem receiving the story of a different Jesus, um, hearing about a different spirit, unlike the one that that was preached and certainly a different gospel. So what exactly is a different gospel? Well, we see this brought out even more so in Galatians. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 60 says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one or another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. And he says, but even if I or an angel um, of heaven were to preach a different gospel, that person, whoever it is, would be accursed. So what is the different gospel that Paul is bringing up? Well, we'll see that more so in, and let me get there, to, to Galatians 3. We see him bringing up uh, more so what this different gospel is. Let's go there. Uh, verse 1, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? In other words, are you now be being perfected by works? So the issue here is this issue of what type of works or how do we, how, how do works kind of play in this? The, the different gospel is, is this guys, you are not saved by works and you, you don't keep your salvation by works. You don't gain your salvation by works and you don't keep your salvation by work. Are works important? Sure, but not for salvation. Works may in, works will indicate salvation, but works don't cause you to be saved, and they, they don't keep you saved. In other words, doing something to maintain what was given to you by grace is not the is not the is not the gospel. As a matter of fact, this is what Paul is saying is a different gospel. Let's go back to it. He says, "Did you suffer many things, or did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain." Does he who supplied the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Well, obviously the answer is hearing by faith. And then verse six, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So his point is it was faith or in this case, Abraham, he shows the example of Abraham believing, which is the same word. Um, Abraham's belief or faith was counted to him as righteousness. And let's look what it says in verse seven. Now then, that is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel, the gospel beforehand saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith, those who are of faith are blessed 
along with Abraham, the man of faith. That goes back to what he was saying, what Paul was saying in Romans, the Jew first and the Gentile. It's by this faith. The faith comes first to the Jews, but not all the Jews, but even still the Jews and then the Gentiles. And all of those who are of the faith are spiritual descendants, if you will, of Abraham. Not to say that they are the new Jews. They're not the new Jews, but they are spiritually descendant of Abraham because of his faith. His faith was uh, spoken of in this in this regard. He says, uh, the gospel preached beforehand to Abraham. Well, uh, the Bible didn't go too far in depth as what that means, but let's just say this. The gospel is being saved by faith. Anything that differs from that, anything that says faith plus, you need to do, you need to believe and do this, this, and this. No, you do not. That is not the case. You don't have to believe um, while at the same time stop sinning. That's a works-based salvation. If you believe, you're going to want to stop sinning. You may not, and John says that, um, that that's going to be the case. Anyone who says he does not sin, he's a lie. Uh, if you believe, but you also have to be spiritually baptized. Well, when you believe, you will become, as Paul says, all of us have been baptized. Those who believe for one second or been believers for a year or five decades, all of us are included in the all who have been baptized. And so, my friends, I hope this helps. Any gospel that says that salvation is gained and or kept by works is, as Paul says, a different gospel, which is really not a gospel. Loud.